All right, so today we have a some kind of a Colorado thing here, uh, four door with a turbo of this, surprisingly. And um, it has a 5.3, I guess it is, with a um, 4L80. And I think it's a, I think it's actually a billet billet 7875 uh looks like they neck it down to three inch and then it goes back to a single in dual out flow master chambered flow master so we're going to be get rid getting rid of that and uh trying to clean it up and tidy it up some you know, i'm not really sure why they would put the these intakes really aren't aren't that great of an intake um but i mean i guess aesthetically they do look better than the truck intakes but um as far as performance and drivability i'd rather have a truck intake but um most people that don't know or understand you know see that and think pretty shiny you know whatever so uh they really don't help bottom end uh, with the short runners of the intake um they're really for higher rpm and aesthetics they're really more for aesthetics um but i don't know who built this one uh, but nothing works <laughs> the uh none of the gauges work in the dash and it's just um jumbled together i guess so uh yeah so you got a relay here or something I'm not sure what i would have seen that's a fan relay uh the funny thing to me is uh so there's our fuel feed this is our fuel feed it comes through a flex sensor and then comes into the front of the rail with a plastic clip there those are dangerous and I actually put a fitting in there to use that and then have a, anyway. Okay, all right, so then it feeds up here. You got a pressure transducer, which does not work. It comes to the back, it crosses over, and then there's actually a T back there. And, and one of the legs, this hose, goes to one side of the T and then the other T comes up and feeds the rail where it's deadheaded right here. So uh, I would think that would be problematic. So what I want to do is uh, feed it at the back here, have it come up, loop over to this side, come back, and then over to our regulator. And then um, for some reason they got the inland air temp into the intake right here they do not have it plugged in for some reason i'm not sure um and then they've got a vacuum hose teed to fuel pressure teed to bluff valve teed to i'm assuming wastegate oh and then the other thing is is i mean you can tell this is holly terminator uh harness but then look what we have here. We have a P59 over here. And you know, the first time I saw the truck, I'm looking at it, you know, and I see that this is Holly stuff. And then I, I see the, the ECU here. And then I go in the truck and open the glove box and the Terminator falls out of the dash. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why do they have two ECUs in the truck? So it turns out, that the Holly is not a Terminator X Max, it's just a Terminator X, so it has no transmission control. So they're using this to run the transmission, and then they actually somehow have this wired into the OBD2 because I was able to uh, read the file that was in it and just tune the transmission side of it because. When I was looking at their transmission tune, I'm no expert by any means, but um, 
I, nothing, a lot of the stuff in there didn't make any sense to me. So I changed, you know, did what I would normally do. Again, I'm no expert at, at all at this, but, um, you know, I just did what I felt it should be. And um, he said it shifted and did a lot better. Um, you know, I like to use the blue cat uh, to calculate my tire size, uh, gear ratio, and all that stuff to get my shift speeds and all that stuff and then you know do my the pressures and lock up and all that stuff so i don't know i i had never seen a file like that with that type of data in it so anyway i just put in there what um i'm used to and familiar with and it seemed to work okay so um yeah so then the other thing is uh the oil drain goes into the uh, low oil level uh, spot on the oil pan. And um, he noticed that when he cranks it up that it, it smokes, uh, oil smoke, you know, like from the turbo or something. So either, you know, the turbo is not draining properly because if, if you don't drain below the oil level, then it can't drain right because it's hitting a wall so if you're if you're below fluid level there it has nowhere to go it'll just back up into the turbo um, so you want to make sure that your oil drain is above the oil level and then uh, the other thing i had mentioned on one of my other videos is this is the truck i was referencing um the feed uh, is from the sending unit port on the back of the engine uh, around here to the turbo so um from what i understand i had read this somewhere i thought it was interesting so the you know after you shut it off maybe a little bit of residual pressure comes and then it you know fills continues to feed oil to it and then it what that once the oil settled down then it can't drain and then it smokes so i don't know it, do, it doesn't do it all the time the other day he let it run a little while and then shut it off and when he cranked it up it didn't do it so um i'm gonna do it again how i how i normally do it because how i normally do it i really don't have a problem so um you know it's typically a, how to approach that and if you're not having problems with the way you do things maybe it's working uh they have this uh heater hose thing uh this is a a dump for the or a, i guess would go to a catch can i think he i don't know i think he got a catch can so anyway i'm gonna try to tidy this up so i'm trying to see if i can do a little better job um again they had to put this pulley here which it looks like it's through the alternator bolt yeah it is and then I guess I had to do this because the throttle body's so low, um, the belt would come over and wouldn't work. So, I don't know. I mean, everybody does stuff different. And then I guess this is their boost controller here. Um, I don't know uh, what kind of power it makes, what kind of uh, any boost it's on or anything like that. Um, but we're going to see about putting air conditioning back on it. Uh, he would like to. I would not. But, uh, you know, I guess it looks like maybe there's room for the compressor down there. And then uh, they got an expansion valve up here. So I don't know if that's uh, viable or not. So what I'm going to do is in order to try to get his gauges working, I'm going to pin the sending units uh, for oil and temperature and we already have speed signal going in there from the transmission um, so I'm going to pin these point these sensors to our stock ECU and then allegedly uh, you can take the uh, serial data wire from the ECU and run it to some plug over here and then allegedly the the gauges will all function in the dash so uh, we're going to try to get that working and like i say just try to 
just try to tidy things up a bit and see what what I can do with it um, yeah it's pretty exciting I don't know why people like these trucks um, I guess it's like it's like a newer s10 maybe do they still make s10s I didn't like s10s either so but um yeah we ought to be able to get something done on it and then get it try to get it sorted out uh, speaking of sorted out um, so let's talk about my bad life decisions on <laughs> switching the interior in this truck so uh, I think last time we left off on it uh, we had the interior in and um, it wouldn't run so I was told by the guy that I got it from that uh, Michael had tuned it and that batch was turned off and uh, the engine size had been adjusted from the 5.3 to the, I said in another video, LY6, but it's actually a L96 uh, because apparently the LY6 is an earlier 6.0 or something, but it's an L96. So um, when I... When I got everything together, I had to change, I changed the wiring harness that goes from the fuse box all the way to the back, and the backup camera does work now. That does function. Um, but, um, I have a lot of lights on in the dash, so I'm not sure what, how to, uh, <laughs> how to combat that, so I'm going to try to figure all that out, but, uh, in the end, it probably, it probably wasn't a good idea just for that interior. <laughs> Boy, what a what a bunch of hours of work and everything. I mean, it does look nice, but um, I don't know if it was worth the effort. Because, like I say, there's still stuff I gotta sort out and figure out with the uh, with the lights in the dash. So, um, but the tune-up, when I got it all back together, got that harness switched, uh, once I got the interior and all in before I switched the back harness, I tried to crank it and it didn't do anything. And, um, you know, because he had told me that VATS had been turned off and that it, the engine, it had been tuned, you know, I was like, well, that's, you know, that's not it. So once i got the the rear harness in i was like maybe there's something different in that harness and you know it'll work again tried it nothing so then i hooked up and scanned it and lo and behold it had a a stock 2010 5.3 silverado file in it with vats turned on so i turned vats off and then the truck cranked up so i was happy about that then you know i started wondering you know is everything else correct or whatever so i just got in here pulled the pulled the part numbers off the uh, mass airflow sensor the map sensor and the injectors and just got all my information off of the sensors the known sensors on the engine and um inputted them into the file and um, did a couple of things to the transmission tune and um ran the blue cat on it as well and did you know the pressure and shift time uh calculations so it seems to be uh running fine um i don't know if or how it could have lost the file that you know where it was tuned um by changing the wiring harness and stuff i don't know how it could or would revert back to the 5.3 file so i don't all i can assume is that i was told incorrectly um, which is unfortunate because i had thought you know that was one of the premises for buying it you know i thought that it was or you know trading was that it was already tuned and ready to go and whatnot and then you know i had to pay a hundred dollars in credits to license it and then go through and you know spend my time uh trying to look up the sensors and make sure i had the correct data in and all that stuff so i don't know uh it's just it makes it tough but at least it's together and it's running i again i've got to figure out um you know what a couple of the codes are a couple of them 
you know, a permanent, two of them for our DOD, which it doesn't have DOD. So I don't know how I'm going to get around that or, or get all that turned off, but uh, uh, at least it runs because I was, I was very concerned after, after swapping all of this out that it, you know, and then it didn't run. I was just sweating bullets. So, uh, but this is the harness right here that goes out from the front fuse box all the way to the back. And, um, you know, swap that out. And then there's the heater box over here and the dash. I hope the dash didn't crack. And then there's the cab wiring harness and steering column and all. So, um, the, the airbag light is on. And I don't, I don't know if I have to have this module in the truck like I, i'm not sure what all it looks at or how it knows what it knows but i don't know if i need to swap you know that airbag which i mean that one's gmc and then this module i don't know what all i need to swap to get the airbag light off so i have to the smart thing to do would be to scan it and figure out what what it's saying but it was really hindsight it was really a dumb idea because the vala integration with everything and i just figured that uh, i just figured that since i was swapping everything all the wiring harnesses and all that stuff that um it should work and i and i took a gamble and lost so but like I say it does look good and it runs and drives like I say I, I wish there was a way i could figure out to turn off all the stuff in the dash let's see I think I had that off from flashing it on. But um, yeah, so it's got obviously the security light uh, and then, you know, the stability track because the check engine light's on. And then the TPMS, which was the dumbest thing that they ever put in a vehicle. And then the service park assist um, junk service trash control. So, yeah, I got a lot of cool codes and stuff, and then, you know, now this is going to flash and everything, so I think I was better off with the basic interior, but, um, yeah. So that's that. Learn from me. Don't do that. And um, I'll give some updates on the Colorado once we get further along.